G'day guys, Mad Matt here. And Aaron. So we've got a question coming into the inbox and we often get this sort of question and I thought, you know, we should do a video and answer this question for you guys. So the question's from another Matt, so he's probably as mad as me. So Matt says, hey Mad Matt, new to Toyotas, always had a patrol, ha ha. It's not that funny. That's not funny, dude, that's sad, <laughs> all right? That is sad. Don't say anything, don't, don't upset the patrol people, mate. That's true, because then they all start going, I'm TD42, TD42, and spasming. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's jokes, all right? <laughs> uh, so then he goes on, anyway, looking to come to the dark side. We love you, mate, you'll be welcome over here. All right, I uh, was wondering what the best Model 80 series is to get, and what engine should I be looking for? Naturally aspirated or turbo, petrol, LPG, etc., etc., which is all really fair questions. And so Aaron and I thought, well, let's try and answer that, and and really with principles that can apply to any engine, any vehicle. Okay, so yeah, we're going to talk specific 80 series, but take the principles and the thinking and apply it to whatever vehicle you're looking at buying. So to start with, Aaron. See, Aaron's a bit of a Toyota encyclopedia. You know, you know how there's Wikipedia. Well, this is Toyotapedia. All right. So, especially, yeah, it's, it's a bit phenomenal. Anyway, you're setting me up for failure now. Too right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Aaron's going to run us through the various engines that came out in the Toyotas in the eighty series. Yep. All right. So, firstly, uh, the eighty series ran from nineteen ninety through to nineteen ninety eight. So, there were a number of changes along the way. So if we look at the petrol motors that you saw in the 80s, so from 1990 through to 92, they had the old 4 litre, 3 FE, 3 F, mm, not much of a... It shouldn't have been called a motor. <laughs> it came out of the 60 series, so yeah. um, you know it was soon replaced by the 1 FZ FE, which ran effectively from 92 up to 98 in, in the 80 series, with a, a small revision in 95. Yep. Right. Um, good motor. Solid motor. Did, did you know... That motor was actually built with a design life of one million kilometres for its first major engine overhaul. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. That, anyway, carry on. All right. So then, that, that's the petrol motors. Then, then you had the diesel motors. So you had your naturally aspirated 1HZ, which was the 4.2 litre six cylinder, and that came out in 1990 and ran the, the full, full way through to 98. And then you had the factory turbo diesel 1HDT, which ran from 90 through to 94, uh, and that was replaced by the multi-valve factory turbo diesel, which the designation was 1HD FT, and that was from 95 through to 98. Now that's the rare sought after turbo diesel. That's, yeah, that's the one that a lot of people are transplanting into, you know, the various other vehicles and that yeah. sort of thing. Um, okay, so, so that's the motors that are available Essentially, I mean, there's people out there putting LSs into them and all sorts of other things, but let's just stick to the sort of the mainstream mm -hmm. motors. Now, what um, what are some of the applications and pros and cons for each motor? Um, I did an interesting exercise a number of years ago, Aaron, and that is where I, I asked a whole bunch of guys, what engine are you running in your 80 series and what's your litres per hundred? And then based on the current fuel pricings of the day, I worked out how much it cost you to do 100 kilometers in that engine. And I averaged it out across all the en engines. Yep. And the results were quite interesting. The, this bit's not interesting. The, <laughs> the, the petrol engine was by far the worst. Most expensive to do 100 kilometers. And I don't think that's any surprise to anyone. Nobody's no. surprised by that. But this one was surprising. The cheapest was the LPG. Okay. okay, and then the diesel sat in between that. The one H said, I think it was sort of up towards the top end there. Mm -hmm. And from memory, the turbo, the the uh, FT motor was was um, was, was yeah. you know down near the, the LPG costs. Yeah, yeah. So, so really interesting numbers. So, I, I guess the the next question you really need to be asking yourself is, what do you want to do with this vehicle? Are you going to go touring where? You know, you're doing really long distances and range and fuel economy is important to you. Or are you just going to do the weekend warrior type work where, you know, you're only going to be travelling a couple of hundred k's from home and, and getting out in the bush and it's not going to be done very regularly. Mm, that's right. So, yeah, I think if so, you're going to be doing the first one yeah, and, you, and range is important to you, don't get a petrol. <laughs> do not. <laughs> no, I mean, I recently went down the Victorian high country and... Uh, and 
well, a number of times I've been down there, but you know, I towed the camper trailer. I got 170 kilometers out of 90 liters of petrol and LPG. Oh, yeah. That's pretty heavy. <laughs> that was, that it's got to hurt at the Bowser. Yeah. Yeah, but you only do it once in a while. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well make the most of it. Um, yeah, so so yeah, it's definitely one thing about the Toyota motors though is reliability is something that they pretty much all have. Mm -hmm. You know, just people tend to think that a diesel, you know, that's reliable, never give you a grief, any grief. But the petrol motors are the same story. Provided yeah. you service them and do the right thing, just the same as a diesel, they are reliable, all of them. And uh, and and both my petrol ladies have uh, have all got you know four hundred thousand on them, and you know, and, and are still unopened motors. Yeah. And I flog my motors. I drive them hard. So. Back, back on point now that I've gone way off track. Well, that's, a, that's another thing. So you, you talk about you know, maintenance costs. So one of the things with the, whether you've got the 1HZ uh, naturally aspirated diesel or the, the, the factory turbo diesel, they have a timing belt that needs changing in them. So that's something that you need to consider, changing that timing belt. Obviously you've got your, your fuel injectors uh, and your, your fuel pump that you know, do require maintenance. Uh, and that can be quite a costly exercise, so that's the sort of thing that you do need to factor into your purchase decision as well, depending on you know the, the service history of the vehicle you're buying. Yep. Um, but yes, they are a, a, a pretty reliable thing. Now, you're not gonna find many naturally aspirated 1.8Zs out there anymore, because most people have strapped hair dryers to them, because you know they're not a particularly um, they're low vigorous drive. <laughs> vigorous? No, they're no. not vigorous. No. No, they're, I mean, the thing about the 1HZ is it's a tractor. Mm -hmm. It will get the job done every day, day in, day out, and it will just be a repeat performance of the same boredom you suffered the day before. <laughs> <laughs> That's the 1HZ, yep. as reliable as anything. Mm -hmm. um, they, don't, they don't put out a lot of power. Mm -hmm. They don't tow fast, but they'll tow everything anywhere. Yeah. Um, a lot of you know, good good in that sense. Yeah, and then you've got the the the, the factory the one HD T motor, the the very first of them. They did have some big end issues, but Toyota sorted them out, and they were doing some recalls and replacing big end bearings in them. Mm. Um, but the multi valve turbo diesel, that FT motor, look as I say, they they're fairly rare, and they're the ones that people are still paying a lot of dollars for. Like you see people putting you know twenty five thirty k still on an eighty series, which is Crazy money. Yeah, I, I don't see, and, and essentially, you could have two identical vehicles: one petrol, one with that motor in it, and they're both modded the same chassis and body-wise. And so, you're essentially going to be paying fifteen grand for a motor. Yeah, and, and you know, and that's that's a big differential, and you're going to be able to buy an awful lot of petrol for that differential. Yeah, correct. But you're not going to have the same resale either. I mean, Toyota yeah. people are a bit crazy when it comes to what they spend on trucks. <laughs> yeah, um, we are. Yeah. We are. Yeah. Oh, you know, we all have our passions and our flaws. <laughs> so, so, um, so, so there's definitely some things to think about your application. How are you going to be using your four-wheel drive? If you're going out into the desert, man, I've, I've done the calculations. For me to get across the Simpson in my 80 series, this is just, just the 80 series, not towing, I, I need all my fuel in the tanks, like both tanks, and I think I calculated I need something like eight jerry cans on top of that. Just yeah. to get across the Simpsons. It's only 440 Ks, you know, it's like, really? But when you're burning in sand, I can be burning 30, 40 litres per hundred quite, yeah. quite easily, and um, that's the sort of you know, you know, situation I've got. And if you have the multi valve turbo diesel, you might be able to get a thousand k's between refuel fuels out in the bush, yeah. as opposed to sort of six hundred at best, draining mm. one hundred and forty five liters out of your twin tanks. Yep, and that's without so, ra long range tanks, tanks, of course. So, so the best way to compare motors is to look at the cost to do a hundred kilometers as one factor. Compare it that way, because you'll be surprised at the numbers that come back to you. The other thing is. Um, the servicing cost, we've touched on that, but one other thing with that, the petrol motors, they actually only need to be serviced every 10,000, even 15's fine if you're using good quality oils, and that, um, and they're a very clean running motor internally, provide they're serviced, um, you know, and, and if they're running LPG, they're really clean as well, and plugs every 10 um, as well. I, uh, I mean, there's a lot of go different skills of thought. Some guys will run the Iridium plugs and Platinum plugs, and they get they reckon they get 100,000 Ks. I personally run an, an NGK 
plug and I just change them every 10 and I notice a performance improvement from every 10. It's, a lot of guys say you're over servicing it, Matt. Yeah, it's my money, it's my car. Mm. Yeah, you, fair, fair. No. Mate, yeah. anything to get an extra yeah. one litre per hundred in terms of fuel economy out of it. <laughs> Look, man, you, you, you're approaching this wrong. Fuel economy and my 80 series are not words we use in the same sentence. Except bad fuel economy. Yeah, I've just got a drinking problem and I like it. <laughs> okay, guys, so look, Matt, I hope that's been some helpful information for you and helped you get a frame to start to think about the right motor. Because at the end of the day, if it came down to me, and I know there's a lot of guys in my camp who would who say what motor would run, well, every day of the week we'll steer you towards the petrol because purchase price of the vehicle is cheaper. Operating costs are cheaper. Reliability is absolutely there. Perf power and performance out of the box and torque is there. The only downside is they chew fuel like there is no tomorrow. And uh, we did a little bit of calculation around this. So did you know how far it is to the moon, Aaron? 384,000 kilometers. Well, here's an interesting fact for you, mate. My 80 series has got 382,000 kilometers on it. Now, how much fuel do you think it would take for the space shuttle get to get to the moon? No idea. <laughs> three million and, and point seven, three point seven million liters of fuel. That's for the space shuttle get to, to the moon. It got there pretty it, quick, but <laughs> it did. But do you want to know how much fuel my eighty series would take? No, you tell me. Eighty-four thousand liters of fuel. So it is actually not that bad on fuel. <laughs> My 80 series is actually quite good compared to a space Jeez. shuttle. Yeah, okay, all right. All I'll, right. Give you, I'll give you that one. How good is that? I'm Mad Matt. I'm not. Stay safe on the trails.